All right, we're gonna we're gonna get going. So everyone, make your way to your seats. Sophie and I were chatting a little earlier, and I was uh, interested to hear that she first came to API Days three years ago as a participant. Indeed. And you've been in uh, in API since 2012, and uh, now to be back here and sharing what you're learning and yes. uh, what you're working on in getting organized for APIs in the corporate environment. And you run API governments and developer relations. And I think we'll hear a little bit about that. So warm welcome for Sophie. Hello. So it's great to be here because as you said, um, I used to be just um, visiting and I learned a lot at this conference and I like it a lot. So being at a as a presenter is, is really something I was very happy when I got invited. Um, my talk will be about organization of um, teams around APIs because it's, it's not just technology, we need the people to build the technology. And um, we are a large company, so we are Euro Hermes. I don't know how many of you guys know our company. Any hands? Ah, very good, very good. That's nice. Um, for those who don't, I give some context because I think it's interesting to understand where we are with APIs and why we invest so much. Um, we are more than 100 years old, so uh, we came from, from a time where insurance looked like that. Uh, massive oak desks, paper, and uh, insurance was like contracts written on paper, and then there was communications. Um, and so on. Um, but that was a hundred years ago, and we changed a lot ever since. Um, so we are really not a startup, but we do believe we are a fintech. And why am I saying that? Because if you look at it, at the basics of insurance, it's pretty straightforward. It's data, it's information, it's algorithms processing that information, and then you add some money because you, um, that's, that's what insurance is about. It's paying out when a claim is happening. Um, so this is completely data oriented, completely data driven. And um, this is where APIs are really the, the one tool that helps us um, doing it right. Um, I would like to give you a quick overview about the, the product we do because it's, it's, it's not like a car insurance. It's a bit more specific and gives you the context why we do or why we need to do APIs here. Imagine there's two companies, uh, the left company selling goods to the right company. So there's the little ship going and then there's an invoice and, well, we hope after a little time, usually 60 to 90 days, the invoice is being paid and everybody's happy. But what if, um, well, the ship went over. It takes time, it takes a little bit more time. What's happening? Oh, ah, um, unfortunately, the other company got bankrupt before paying the invoice. Now the money is gone. And that is the case that we insure. Um, of course, our left company has more than just one customer. It's a large company having multiple customers, which we all insure individually. And we do that then in a large, large um, scale. I mean, uh, worldwide, you have millions of companies doing business with each other, selling things on invoices. So there's millions uh, of transactions. And then there's other market players like platforms, like uh, brokers uh, and such, which we can partner up with to help them secure their business. Now imagine those millions of transactions in the past, indeed they were managed manually. So we gave the, our customers online tools where can, they can handle all that stuff. But uh, I don't have to tell you guys that APIs are much more efficient to do that. And that's why we invested into this already in 2007. Um, currently we have a legacy API running with uh, a bit more than 300 users. Um, of roughly 100 million trans transactions API calls a year, and that covers 190 billion 
of euros of insurance exposure. So it's quite a lot of risk that we manage through those APIs already today. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, how we got there. So the, the, the first organization that we put in place, it was like 2007, it was a very simple thing. We, we had our IT teams, they have developed our internal applications and they were using web services, SOAP, at the time. And then we had the idea, okay, great, let's take what we get, let's expose that to our customers and to do that we just created a team of, of people who would talk to our customers, sell the existing APIs and so on. Um, so a very simple setup which worked a bit like not so great um, because in fact um, the, the APIs we, we had were super technical. They were very hard to understand and on top of that, the team that we put in place to support the customers was completely overloaded because at the same time we, they had to care for helping customers on board and try to convince our IT to uh, improve things and so on. That's why we did an upgrade to the organization then, which is uh, organization number two. So we added a team. Uh, I call it uh, a design and management team for the APIs. The objective of this team was redesigning the SOAP web services that we had to make them easier to use. Um, so they had quite a challenge. I mean, it worked better than the other one. Was kind of okay as a setup because now we, we were able to modify these existing services and make them more business oriented. Um, and that allows us to connect like 50 new partners a year, which is not much, but already. And by the way, this is when the competition copied us when we got that um, organization. So we took it as a compliment. But still, um, what we got is not sufficient or what we had was not sufficient because we had a lot of legacy technology we had high support efforts that we need to put in place for each and every new connection. Our backend system were aging at the same time. And uh, well, it was classic IT architecture. Classic IT architecture means we had to deliver on weekends because we had to shut down the entire system um, with custom impact. So clearly um, that was not scalable. Clearly there was no future for this and we needed a radical change. And if I mean radical change, um, what I mean essentially is all API-centric, all on the cloud to have the scalability that we need, and event-driven architecture. Um, it meant actually um, a lot of REST APIs that we had to build and that we are still building. We're talking about roughly 50 APIs that we need to build with 450 endpoints. It's uh, a lot of work to be done. And that again means that from, from where we were, where there was a small team of API enthusiasts working on the subject, trying to convince the business of the utility of all this, we really had to go to something where the entire company is involved where everybody understands what APIs are and what the, the, the usefulness of these APIs is for our company. Um, on the other hand, for the centralized organization that we had put in place, that means, oh, well, it didn't work anymore because central organization means bottleneck because you simply cannot have all the functional knowledge of one large company in just one team. If you could, then probably your company is too large because you don't need those many people. Um, really, it's not possible to bundle everything in one. And that is why we had to put in place organization number three, which is now roughly a year old. Um, and at this stage, I'd like to say thank you to Spotify because they are quite famous for the squad-based organization they have created. And we inspired ourselves from that. 
um, because we believed that we had to federate the ownership and the building of APIs, and, and this uh, setup looked very good to us. A squad is a small team. It's a mixed team of, of uh, different skill sets, different backgrounds. So we have uh, typically a product owner um, who is... Um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, that, that's the main benefit of the, the squad organization, that you bring people together and you don't have those silos anymore between, like, I have a huge business organization and they are super proud of their products and then IT should just be a service. It's really making these people work together and that's, that's really key and that works very well. But coming back to the, the construction of uh, an API squad, typically you will have a, a product owner who is more business oriented, coming typically from the business with some technical knowledge, of course, that we can give this person, um, really creating a vision for the API as a product, really looking into the business strategy, the business value that is created, um, defining for whom the API is intended to be, and uh, also making pressure on the quality of service because that's what your customers will feel. The, 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 the API must be 100% bulletproof, otherwise your customers will not be happy. On the other hand, another key role is then the tech lead in the squad who will foster for the technical design of the API, uh, for the, the performance aspects, for the sustainability also of the code, and uh, the automatic deployments. And then you have other team members. It depends on the, on the complexity of the API that you're going to build, because there's very small um, squads that can have just two, three people, and there's larger squads that can have maybe seven, eight people with more developers, because you have to deliver more. Now, that being said, we're very happy with this um, setup as a basic to, to federate uh, federate um, the, the work on the APIs, but it does also have some challenges, and, and I'm going to list five of them in my presentation. Um, the first challenge is consistent design, because as a company, of course, if you have many APIs that you propose to your customers, you will want to have them a bit similar, you would want to have them have a, a company feel of the, of the way they are being designed. Um, however, if you have really autonomous small teams, um, it won't be uh, automatic. Um, the reasons are various, so you can have different technology choices, and it's not just that you could define one technology and say, we do all in Node. No, there's good reasons to use different technologies per squad. It depends on the um, backends used and, uh, and so on. Um, second, the product owners can also have very different um, backgrounds. So there's some who are very IT savvy and they are like curious and they, they understand what we're talking about and the swagger is nothing new to them. Great. Um, but there's also others who are really this, this more business thing where they say, okay, um, come on, it's complex. I don't really understand that. Do I need to really work on, on API design, why shouldn't my IT do it for us? Uh, and because that is so, we created um, a governance entity um, looking into API and data governance aspects, because the two go essentially together. And what they do is they work with each of the, the squads um, so first of all, we created a design guide that we publish internally on our Confluence to, to set some, some basic principles on how a Euler Hermes way of doing an API should, should look like. So it's basic things like camel case and, and such. And we published that, it's, it's available for everybody in the company, fine. And second, we also did the same for an API catalog, so you can see all the APIs that are planned or being built or already in production, so you don't need to do a redundant one because you believe I need that functionality. You have a look at the catalog and you see, okay, it's being worked on, great. Um, the same goes for the data model, because typically when you create new business features in an API, you will need to create new data objects. 
and you need to make sure that these data objects are consistent with the enterprise data model, and then they are being added to the, the corporate data catalog. What we do, um, and which is very, very essential, is that the governance team is coaching the squad before its governance can be seen as a very strict policing thing. But we, we believe it really to be um, coaching. And I see I have, uh, I'm going to run out of time, so I'll be more quick, sorry. Um, we contribute to the design sprints. And only in the end of the um, process, we also have this police role of validating the designs and um, looking then also into the documentation of those APIs. So the second challenge is cloud-related aspects, which is much more technical, because when you have multiple APIs that you expose, there's also some basics that you need to um, uh, take into consideration. It's security. We have our own ADP based on WOS02. Um, we have the gateway that needs to be put in place. We have a resource manager for authorizations. So we have a cloud foundation team looking into all these aspects. So they know how to build API security. They know how to build the CI CD pipeline. Um, they have the expertise also about FinOps aspects, which is important on the cloud and on the monitoring tools. Then third, um, there's planning and alignments, which is quite key because if you have multiple small teams that are individually working, you need to align them on the front-end systems that are consuming the, the features from the APIs. Um, so it's very crucial to make them collaborate. Uh, we do it based on uh, Scrum of Scrums, first of all, which is uh, good to align on who's taking which features and which APIs do we put e each features and for basic timely alignments. And then we also have something we call big room plannings, where we have the more strategic projects where there's masses of dependencies. So we to put all the people together in one big room every few months to align on what can be delivered in that next three months. Um, Okay, testing. Testing is super important because whatever you do, you should test it before. Um, because if you don't, then, well, it might backfire. And this is not what you're going to want on your APIs. So we believe a lot in uh, aligned testing. We have uh, created, um, uh, it's basically a de democratic choice of the, the majority of the API squads that we decided to use Postman for testing. Um, the advantage being that the collection we use to test the APIs can be reused. Also, in the order non-regression testing at each delivery, also we create our sandbox from it. So we just record the test and then we add some dummy data to anonymize and then we publish the API sandbox. Um, and we can also provide those collections to our consumers, to our API consumers, to help them um, understand how these APIs work. So that's really nice. Um, and finally, uh, fifth point, very, very important to me, is documentation. We do a lot on that. Um, and we believe it's important to know that documentation is not just for the developer. We always talk about developer portals, developer relations, and so on. But if you look at it, our customers using our APIs, they have developers and they have also the business analysts working with them. And if we don't convince the business analysts and also their decision makers of the usefulness of our APIs before, then the developer won't even have uh, a mission to develop. So um, we really believe that documentation must be um, useful for each of those user groups and the wording needs to be adapted and that's what we pay a lot of attention to also in the API governance team. And then finally, if you did all that, all the documentation, you need to share it and that's the, um, the, the use for the developer portal. We're currently building this. Um, I would have loved to show you the finalized, but it will be more at the end of the year. Developer portal is from our developers to you guys or to the developers of our customers and partners. So there's a lot of technical um, aspects that we push to the development portal. And of course, um, 
There's also the functional aspects, and we take benefit on the API consultancy team that we created earlier because they have the knowledge on how to speak to our um, customers' BAs, how to explain them um, the, um, the APIs that we have. And uh, this is also for our internal developers, by the way, because our internal developers are usually externals working on a temporary mission. So they have the same needs to understand our APIs like externals would have. And then there's uh, for the organization aspects, of course, somebody who needs to orchestrate that portal with all the content that is being pushed by the various stakeholders. So um, that's it, basically. Um, what I wanted to say is that APIs, they are really um, great to connect. They connect systems. Um, of course, that only works if people connected before, and that's what we try to do with that organization. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Sophie. Uh, because we have lunch up here, we actually do have time for a few questions. And looks like we have our first there. Hi, um, amazing presentation, thank you. Um, I was wondering how long did it take for the new orga organization to be successful? I mean, from mm -hmm. the shift from the regular to the squad uh, organization? Um, we are doing this since uh, maybe a year and a half, I would say. And we started with uh, uh, a first squad and tried it out and uh, learned from it and then, then spread that knowledge to the other teams. Um, it was difficult in the beginning and especially it was difficult to, to create that understanding on the business side why we are doing all this. Um, however, now that it is understood, it works very well. And also on business side, they, they see there's a concrete value they see can they can use this to sell products on different channels, and that makes the, the, that sort of unblocks um, the um, the work. Yeah, I think that's a a key point that that it's not you can't do this change overnight, right? No, that, no, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was curious similarly with the style guide, mm -hmm. how how you approached that. I assume some sort of collaborative route as opposed to saying yes. this is <laughs> this is our yes. style guide. Yeah. Um, honestly, um, we also we didn't start from scratch. We looked on the web um, and we looked on some style guides that we found and that we liked, and we inspired ourselves from that. And then working with our API teams, or we had some guild meetings where we discussed the 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 way we wanted to do things. So the, um, the style guide needs to evolve over time. It's, it's not like carved in stone. Of course, you, you don't want to change it all every month, but uh, it's, it's a living thing. Yeah, we have a, another well, question there. In a previous slide, you, you have shown um, the painful six releases by year. Yep. I see, I felt this pain in much of our customers. So, um, how many major releases do you have a year now, or maybe you don't have major releases, maybe you have only minor and incremental releases over the year? How is how this aspect changed? Thank you. We still do have major releases because we still do have uh, legacy backends that we cannot just wipe away. Um, however, our strategy is to really microservice all that. And once that is done, then we can always deliver seamless without impacting production. So um, today, I think we have like 11 major release uh, slots in a year that we can use. We don't use them every time because it's only necessary when you need to orchestrate all the systems. While you already are on microservices, you just do a new version, you make sure that the, the consumer systems take them the time to adapt to the new version and fine, so it's much easier. 
Is there anyone who wants to ask the last question? Look at that. That's, that's the difference. A lot of conferences I go to, you say the last question, someone says, oh, I'm not going to have the last word, but like here no one, is, no one is minded. Go for it. Um, I have a question. What determines the size and objective of a squad? How do you come to the, yeah, a squad? Um, good question. We, um, well, uh, we can have very small squads when we have more, more technically oriented um, features that we uh, need to develop, which are um, easy to solve. For example, when we do e-signature, we just use an existing SaaS solution and we create a front-end API for it to be less dependent from it. And so it's a simple thing and it's a very small squad. Um, when we do the risk management API, then it's much more complex because that's the core of our company knowledge. So we need to really involve the business people. Uh, we need more developers because it's much more complex. It has many more endpoints that are included. So, and how do we create the squad? Um, it's alignments which uh, we do. So the, we try to, so we try to intelligently like cut. The, the, the systems that we have in pieces that are functionally oriented that make sense to our customer. For, you can say insurance cover coverage, that is one, one element that, is, that you can cut from, from the rest. And contract management could be another one, for an example. All right, join me in thanking uh, Sophie for the great presentation. Thank you.